I want to start a new series on my channel called Lucky Looks Back, where I look back at a season 1 through 4 episode of Friendship is Magic and see how it holds up today. Because on a long running series like this show, when an early season episode comes out, it might feel like the best episode ever, but then when the show continues on, well, that might be a different story. And the reason I'm looking back at season 1 through 4 episodes right now is because those feel like the nostalgic episodes to me. Because the majority of those episodes were before Twilight became an Alicorn, before Rainbow Dash was a Wonderbolt, and before the Kiyomar Crusaders got their cutie marks. And to this day, all of those have been accomplished and passed by, so now we have the ponies going for new goals. It's also because, while Season 4 was showing that Friendship is Magic was going through some changes, Season 5 is when they really saw it happening and to full effect, which is also when Starlight became a character, so basically this is all pre-Starlight debut. So even though the show only saw it back in 2010, due to how much the show changed over time, it makes the older episodes feel like a nostalgia trip already. And what isn't any more nostalgia about it than where it all started off at? Now with the introduction out of the way, Lucky Looks Back, Friendship is Magic Part 1, Season 1, Episode 1, debuted on October 10th, 2010. So this episode starts with a book opening, and Celestia tells us some backstory of the land of Equestria, and tells us the fact on how her days were the time ponies are awake, and how her sister's nights are the time ponies are asleep. And that fact that it's normal for most of the population is so devastating for her sister, THAT IT TURNED HER EVIL! And we are straight to the premiere's villain. And now that I look back at this, the motive is very shitty and childish. I'm not saying there has to be a good motive for somebody to be evil, but it needs to be understandable. In fact, this motive is more ridiculous and childish than Starlight's. And when your motive is even worse than Starlight's, then you know you have some problems. Because at least Starlight went through something traumatizing and upsetting that could change on how a person looks at the world. But for Luna, she's upset over Pony sleeping during her nights, aka SOMETHING PONIES WILL USUALLY DO! I could see how this would make her upset and even make her jealous of her sister, but to turn completely evil and turn against her kingdom and sister by refusing to lower the moon for the sun, which is actually endangering the lives of every pony, just seems like a big step over ponies sleeping during your nights. Yeah, you deserve a thousand years time out on the moon, and hopefully you will calm down, you millennial, you old pony. She was sent to the moon by Celestia using the elements of harmony, which I completely forgot assisted. I even forgot the ponies had elements at all, like, when was the last time they mentioned having elements? I think the season 4 finale, I mean, damn! Now after that overall great introduction to the world we are about to go into, we saw for the first time our main protagonist, Twilight Sparkle, who believes she has heard about the elements of Harmony before, but doesn't know where, and this is what I mean about how nostalgia feels. It just feels so weird seeing her without her wings now. And then... For the very first time. My little pony, my little pony. Ah, 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 ah. How can I always miss this my little pony? I'm not trying to rip off that skip the theme gag just what you does. I really can't stand that theme song. Never did, never will. So we might as well just get that out of the way, and I will never mention it again. NEVER EVER EVER EVER! So then we see Twilight being invited to a get together with, probably her only friends, but rejects it because she quote unquote, has a lot of studying to do. Does that pony do anything except study? I think she's more interested in books than friends. Which is easy to believe as true. I mean, think about it. She doesn't know how important the elements of Harmony are at this point. She doesn't know that she needed to find them to save Equestria, or that she even needed to save Equestria yet. She doesn't know how important it is that she needs to know about them. She was calmly walking by, then ran, when she has to interact with ponies instead of studying. When to any pony else not knowing how important today is the day would have been like, Oh, friends? Sure, I can focus on learning about the elements of Harmony later. It's not like a big dark pony is gonna come and put our town in eternal night. Am I right, friends?
I guess they were rather lucky Twilight isn't that much into having friends, as with being a nerd trying to learn about everything. Huh. Then we see Twilight trying to learn about the elements of Harmony, like the nerd that she is. Also introducing Spike, with the first of many episodes he has not that much purpose in. Spike found the book Twilight was looking for, and after reading May on the Moon, what is supposed to be a myth from olden pony times, and an old pony's tale, but believe those myths and tales were enough proof to believe that the May on the Moon is Nightmare Moon that is going to escape and bring out Eternal Night. I mean, she is right? but she takes this out of myths and tales, and later on in the season, she refuses to accept something that is more her face. I mean, Pinky Sense is a little hard to believe as well, but she believes that Nightmare Moon is gonna come based off again, myths and tales, but she doesn't believe what's happening right in front of her face! Sometimes, Twilight is a little bit to get your head around, ain't she? But regardless, this is so important to write to Princess Celestia about, that she rather have the guy that doesn't know what is really going on write the warning letter instead of the man that knows more what is going on. When they get the letter back, Celestia basically told her that, although she trusts her, she also needs to stop being a nerd and help her prepare for the summer sunset celebration. Damn it! So this means one of two things. Either Celestia owns the Millennium Necklace so she knew all this time that Nightmare Moon was going to come, so she advises plan for Twilight Sparkle to be friends with this specific group of ponies so they can form the elements of harmony to defeat her, or, maybe this time, she knew that her student was full of horse shit. So then Twilight stopped by the town that is going to be our main setting of the show, where we meet our second of the main six, who has the most unpredictable introduction out of all of them. Uh, hello? Then on to introducing our third member of the main six, we meet her inside her apple farm, Applejacks, who introduces her family of apple desserts, and also Big Macintosh, Apple Bloom, and Granny Smith, who we get to know more of throughout the series. This was a nice introduction to Applejack, it showed a good basis of her character, her being a family pony, hardworking and proud to be. Applejack's family then guilted Twilight to overstuffing herself with food, and after that we meet our fourth pony of the main six, Rainbow Dash, who rudely bumps into Twilight. I mean, accidents happen, but Twilight was standing there for about... You really couldn't see her? But that introduction of her scared her so much that she threw up all that food, and she met the pony? that brought in the bronies. Her introduction is honestly weird to me. There's nothing wrong about it, it pretty much shows what Rainbow Dash is about, and mentions that she wants to be a Wonderbolt. What is weird about it to me was that she was likable. Very, very likable. Rainbow Dash is a pony that I question if I like or not, but this episode portrayed her as to being nice. Really, really nice. Yeah, she keeps screwing up, but it's the fault that counts. Yeah, she did laugh when she messed up Twilight's mane, but still, she is portrayed to be super friendly and nice as just so... weird. I'm not saying at all Rainbow Dash isn't a nice and friendly pony, just not to this extent that it just feels super weird. Spike's opinion on her is what the majority thought of her at first. She's amazing! Despite on how weirdly it feels now, it was an okay introduction. Then we go to our fifth pony who, unlike the last one, not a lot of fans got attached to right away. Including me. Unlike Dash, whose tomboyish personality attracted a lot of fans in, Rarity has a more feminine personality and was more of the girly fashionista type. She was the kind of pony that fans believed what the show was going to be like back when it was catching attention on the internet. There was a great episode with her later on in the season, but she was pretty much my least favorite of the main characters, and I thought she really wasn't going to go anywhere. But over time, not only has Rarity proven to have more character than Rainbow Dash, but she is hands down the most improved. She started out as one of my least favorite to now currently one of my favorite ponies of the whole show. It is wild on how much she improved since season 1. But that... It's for another time. And then we get to the last of our main characters, Fluttershy, who they basically drive home with that name. Um, I'm Fluttershy. I'm sorry, what was that? Um, uh, my name is Fluttershy. Didn't quite catch that. 
But as much as she is shy, she did flip over when she saw Spike, and then got interested about his whole life. And after that, we got introduced to the main cast, Twilight, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Fluttershy, and that one pink pony that never got a proper introduction. <laughs> then Twilight was finally able to settle in her temporary home, at the time, only to be thrown a party by... Who else? Surprise! Ironically, that was actually supposed to be her name. Getting a proper introduction, Pinkie Pie throws a party for Twilight to welcome her and to help her make friends. Which of course, friends being something Twilight doesn't like. Then the smartest part in Equestria took about... As she is drinking hot sauce and runs up to a room for quiet, like the anti-social that she is. It's great irony that the future princess of friendship was actually not even interested in having any friends at all. Like, she didn't even care all that she was alone. She pretty much didn't care about having any friends. I think it was a good choice to start her out this way. It makes her promotion to princess of friendship a lot more rewarding. She is more worried about Nightmare Moon and OLD PONY'S TAIL coming true. Princess was right. I hope it really is just an old pony tale. Again! You will believe an old pony's tale. A myth. A basic prediction that sounds as believable to come true as when people thought the world was going to end, but not time that happens, my Pokemon's your fucking pony fuck! Okay, okay. I need to stop here. This is my new heart, and I need to treat it well. Okay. Now it's time for the Summer Sunset Celebration, where we finally get to see Celestia, but she doesn't show up because... No reason at all. Yeah, literally nothing is explained why she didn't came. At all. I mean, she might have been kidnapped by Nightmare Moon by the moment she left the moon, but there still needs to be an explanation, man! It's confusing that she won't show up and nothing is explained. Then we finally see the villain that this whole episode was building up to. Oh my beloved subjects, it's been so long since I've seen your precious little sun-loving faces. Except this is the first time you are seeing their faces as the pony faces you saw last time are long non-existent beyond this point. Twilight claiming she is the only one who knows who she is also means she knows why she is here. From this moment forth, the night will last. <laughs> now, I know that isn't the most evil sounding plan, but when you think about it, it's pretty damn cruel. You need sunlight to grow plants, and without plants you can't have food, and without food you will eventually die from starvation. So when you think about it, Luna is the only one that's pretty much killing just about every pony in this world, just so they can appreciate her nights. You know, Starlight's motive sounds a lot less ridiculous the more I think about this. And that makes Nightmare Moon the most murderous villain confirmed. And that was the very first episode, Friendship is Magic Part 1. And looking back, it was a good introduction, to say the least. The premiere was good at getting its point across of each of its characters and the villain as bad as she was, their basic personality and what it is about them that we should know. I like when Twilight was not into making friends, which pretty much set the goal she made two seasons later as a really huge accomplishment, and... Yeah, pretty much what all Part 1 had. That's why it's called Part 1. Not everything is gonna be here at once. Part 2, however, will have the rest, which I will be looking back at next time. But after that, every season 1 through 4 episode I will be looking back at will be up to you! I always have to have my fans decide. When next time comes around, I am Lucky Charm and have a very lucky day.